What is sequence of returns risk? Why should I avoid equity for short term investments? Hi, I'm Pattu from Freefin Kalan. Let's consider these questions in this video. Suppose you have an investment that gives you a 10% yearly return over five years. If I ask you what is the average return that uh, you've got over these five years or what is the average year on year growth rate, you would immediately say it's 10%. This is also known as the compounded annualized growth rate. Now, it may look a little trivial in this case, but to actually get that compounded annualized growth rate, you take the amount invested, which is the principal P, and you in multiply it by 1 plus 10% into 1 plus 10% and so on five times. And you equate this with P into 1 plus a quantity called, let's call it CAGR to the power 5. And this CAGR in this case is 10% or uh, some people call the CAGR as the geometric average or the multiplicative average. Now suppose there is another investment that gives you varying returns. 27, uh, sorry, 25% in the first year, 1% in the second year, 2% in the third year, 27% in the fourth year and 5% in the fifth year. What is the year on year growth rate? To find that, you again take the amount invested P and multiply it by uh, the first year growth, uh, second year growth, third year growth and so on and equate it again with P into 1 plus CAGR to the power 5 and calculate the CAGR and this will give you 11.42%. So it's a form of um, a geometric average or you can call it a multiplicative average of these returns. Now what is sequence of returns risk? Let's again consider um, all five years, uh, same return of 10%. So the CAGR is again 10%. Now, suppose uh, I invested in a very volatile instrument and got a fantastic return of 25% in the first year. Then I said, okay, I'm going to quit now and I'm going to uh, go to safe uh, fixed income uh, instrument and get 7% for the rest of the four years. Then my CAGR will be about 10%. That is the average growth rate. As a second example, suppose I get that 25% in the first year, then I get greedy and say, let's try and stay on for one more year. In the second year, I get minus 25%. Then I get scared and then I run to the safety of fixed income and get uh, only 7% return for the last three years. My CAGR would only be all, uh, about 3% over those five years. So I would not have made much money. In the first year, let's say I get minus 25%. If I want to get a CAGR of 10% uh, at the end of five years, I must get uh, every year a return of 21%, which is practically impossible, right? So uh, one final example, I get that minus 25%. I get, I say, okay, uh, I, the equity is not for me. I'm going to uh, go to fixed income and get 7% for the rest of the four years my CAGR will be minus 0.34%. This is um, an illustration of sequence of returns risk. Notice that if you get a bad year, it is not possible for you to recover within a short period of time. It takes a long time to recover from that big minus 25% return or you need to get uh, a much higher return to actually get your target return of 10%, which is not practical. So that is sequence of return risk. You get a good year, then everything's fine. And you can, uh, uh, you take the gains and move to a safe instrument. But if you get a bad year, you will not have time to recover within a short time. This is the primary reason why you should avoid equity uh, for short durations. And this is an example of sequence of returns risk. Catch you again later. Bye-bye.